recently there were papers which we have quoted in our in our publication where people have done histology and they said that with the uh, when we do this operation and and if you if for some reason it didn't succeed and you got the material for histology um, they found that there was a bit of stromal tissue sometimes attached to the desmus membrane and people have commented on bits of stromal tissue being attached but they never latched on to the fact that was it a bit of stromal tissue it was actually a whole layer which was very different to the rest of the stroma but that's as close as they got There's a lot of people think oh it's been described before it's just after the desmes and anterior to desmes and it's this layer but it's not then then comes this layer and this layer is then uh, a distinct entity of its own which then applies to the posterior stroma so that's where it exists and, and, and that's its relation to the desmes. Well, they've only showed it in adults. The age group of our patient was 77 years uh, and if it's a true layer, it'll be present in children as well. So there was a query there. And uh, interestingly, the week before I read that, I was in Trivandrum in India giving another lecture called the Shushruta Oration which, for which I chose this topic. And then a young cornea surgeon from that hospital came and showed me, to cut a long story short, OCT images and histology, actual histological, I've got the images of a patient where you can clearly see this layer, beautifully illustrated in a nine and a half year old girl. So I was there, I said, okay, it's there. So people, people will question whether it's a true layer or not. So that, I think, Personally, I'm convinced it is because we've got all the differences from the rest of the cornea. Well, I think that that's mixed feelings because in a way it's embarrassing. It, uh, it, I think these things um, it never happen the way people think they happen. Uh, what happened was we, we published, uh, my first inkling of this layer, like I said, was years back in the paper published 2007. So I presented a paper in our Royal College of Ophthalmologists Annual Congress. We called it the pre desmes stromal layer. The same year I published the paper, uh, so I presented the paper in a meeting in Italy, the Italian Ocular Surface Society meeting in Lecce, and uh, I, we called it the pre desmes stromal layer. We had very preliminary evidence then, uh, and, and we presented it there. And then one of my students said she's going to do an MD on it, but for various reasons she couldn't, so we had lapse of two or three years when we didn't do anything. When we published the paper, when I wrote the paper, I wrote the title as Human Cornell Anatomy Redefined a Novel pre stroma Layer. But my co-authors, uh, there were two girls, one from Egypt, one from Kurdistan, and they said, Prof, the cornea has a Bowman's layer, and there's a Desmet's layer, and uh, you are calling this the pre desmes layer. So you're invoking somebody else's name to describe a new layer. Why don't you just change the name to do as layer? I said, no, no, I think it's for people to just say that, not for me to say that. So we left it at that, but then as a compromise, they put in the title in brackets, do as layer. I have always said this, and this actually stems from uh, way back when I was a SHO in Aberdeen. Obviously I trained in India and had done a lot of ophthalmology when I came here. And I presented one, some simple observation on corneal epithelial wound healing. And there was a, a, a consultant, Dr. Williamson from Glasgow. And uh, you know, as a young ophthalmologist, certain words of encouragement stick in your mind. And this is going back now to almost 30 years or 25 years. And he said, at the end of my presentation, you know, you have um, reaffirmed my faith in the fact that to do research, all you need is an eye and a brain. You don't need anything else, no equipment. So simple things, and simple things are still there to be discovered. There are lots out there. Or our understanding of what we take for granted now uh, is, uh, I think, not complete. I have read a textbook uh, from one of the 
hospitals I worked in where they went to great lengths to describe how to select the best leech to apply to the eye to treat acute glaucoma. So at that time, people believed in it. People actually had some, some evidence, not as with the same rigor as we would look at evidence today, but they had some evidence that it worked and they used to bloodletting was a major, major form of treatment. So it was used for many, many things just on, on very flimsy evidence, so, but it was still state of the art then. So things, what we take as granted today is state of the art so can still be questioned. Well, I think that was my wife who was probably listening on the phone or hung up. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't ask and family life as well. Yeah, yeah indeed. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you what's happened is that I found myself sleeping less uh, and uh, four hours in a day or five hours in a day. Uh, but I think the, the bottom line is if you enjoy what you're doing, then you want to do more. You know, I'd rather come here and do work on Saturdays and weekends and weekends. Today, all morning I spent doing my BJO work and then uh, got on the treadmill and did some exercise for two hours and got ready to come here. And then in the evening I had my social bit. So <coughs> then my admin work and then my uh, bit of it. And then Lana's here, we'll sit and do a little bit of research working on our, our next paper. So it's, it's difficult, it's not easy, but I think if you have the desire, uh, the motivation and the time comes, you know, your motivation is to be there. You must be enjoying it. I mean, basically, you have to enjoy what you're doing. If you enjoy what you're doing, like somebody said, you, if you enjoy what you're doing, you don't have to work a single day in your life. And that's very true. <laughs>